Welcome to the Hadley Mothers Club Candidate Night. My name is Denise Devine. Um, before I introduce tonight's moderator, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Mary Jane Bacon for her years of dedication to the Hadley Mothers Club. Mary Jane was unable to uh, moderate tonight. She has done a wonderful job for us for many, many years, um, and we'd like to thank her. At this time, I'd like to introduce our new moderator, Mr. Av Harris, um, a former resident of Hadley. He is an experienced government relations and communications professional who has served nearly 10 years in state and municipal government. He has also had an extensive background as a broadcast journalist and is seasoned in government relations, legislation, and political strategy and media relations. Av is currently the Director of Legislative Affairs and Public Policy for the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Av will review this evening's rules and introduce the candidates. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. And uh, for everybody watching on television, thank you for tuning in. Democracy works best when people participate. So this is an exciting night. Um, before I proceed to talk about the rules for this evening and introduce the candidates, I do want to invite the Girl Scouts from Hadley. We're very proud of our Girl Scouts. And they are going to be posting the colors and uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Audience attention, color guard attention. Color guard advance. Color guard salute the colors. Audience, the flag of your country. We will now say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Thank you all. Do you want to become me the moderator tonight? You're very good at it. Thank you, the Girl Scouts. Um, now I'm going to give a uh, brief overview of the rules. Uh, there were copies of these available a little bit earlier. The former radio guy, so I'm just going to turn the volume down just a tad. Um, so uh, the evening tonight is going to be divided into sort of uh, two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be hearing from each of the candidates running for the various offices. And uh, there are also opportunities for questions from uh, everybody in attendance tonight. And the second part of the evening, we're going to get to some of the questions 
uh, from you, from the voters. Um, in the uh, first part of the evening, every candidate you see up here next to me is going to get five minutes to talk about themselves, why they're running for the office they're running for, and there'll be an opening statement. Now, there are a couple of people in the front row who will be timing the responses to make sure that we stay on schedule tonight. So when you have four minutes left, you're gonna see a sign. When you have three minutes left, you're gonna see a sign. When you have two minutes left, you'll see another sign. When you have one minute left, and then when you're out of time, there's gonna, there's gonna be a big fat zero, and it's gonna say stop. Now, my job as your moderator tonight is to make sure that the trains are running on time. So I've been told to be very strict about the timing. So when you see that one minute sign come up, time to start wrapping it up because I will stop you when it says stop because I'm doing what I was told. Anyway, um, so let me just spend a brief second on the candidates for the questions from many of the folks in the audience tonight. Um, they can be submitted um, to the committee or moderator during the first part of the forum. When we take our break, we'll be then going to review the questions. And then if there are questions that are repetitive or uh, they're not really relevant, we can disqualify those. Um, multiple questions on the same topic can be consolidated, condensed, so that we come up with some good questions from you, from the audience, to the, moder uh, to, to the candidates. Um, there's no literature, buttons, or any type of campaigning uh, tonight. This is really informational for you, for the voters. Candidates, however, can wear a button. Um, uh, we can also talk about ballot questions tonight. They can be addressed tonight. Ballot questions must be read and explained by a town official or chairperson of the committee sponsoring the ballot question. Presentations for ballot questions and um, can be subject also to the same five minute limit. Um, here's the big, big bad rule. Any candidate that doesn't follow the rules for time or um, uh, for decorum and things like that can be asked to leave. Um, now, after the candidates, after you each complete your five minutes introductory remarks, uh, I have the discretion to allow candidates who are competing for the same office to ask other candidates running for the same office, uh, ask each other questions that are based on issues only. Candidates that are asked have a maximum of two minutes for a response to those questions. So there are some competitive races uh, in Hadley this year. Any other essentials that I missed? No, good, okay, good. All right, so without um, any further delay, uh, I'll go ahead and introduce the candidates. Um, let's see, I think starting to uh, Starting on my left, your right, the candidates for the Board of Health. We have two candidates running for three year terms. We have Joe Levine, and we have, people. And we have Emma M.H. Dragon. Okay. So I think what would probably be best is. Um, why don't we start from the outside and work our way in, and why don't you come up here and make your introduction here. And I apologize for this microphone. You may have to hold it while you talk. Okay, so without further ado, Gerald Levine is running for Board of Health. Thank you. You're welcome. Leave it to the Mother's Club to get the biggest guy in here to run this. Hello, my name is Jerry Devine, and I'm running for a three-year term on Board of Health. I want to thank the Mothers Club for hosting tonight's Candidates Nice and giving us a uh, chance to espouse our credentials. Uh, and by the way, I'm an associate member of the Hadley Mothers Club, at least that's what my wife tells me when I get to lift heavy boxes and put up signs for such events as this. I've served the citizens of Hadley for the last 15 years in many ways. I was on the first Long Range Planning Committee, selectman for nine years, presided over the town meetings as a moderator, was member of both the town's 350th committee and the Hopkins Academy 350th Celebration Committee. My wife Denise and I were honored in 2013 when Hadley awarded us the uh, Fred Oakley Jr. Volunteer of the Year Award. Proud to receive that. All that being said, the only question I've had for the last month is why are you getting off the select board and why are you running for the Board of Health? That's a pretty simple thing to answer. Um, I'm trying to scale back a little bit. 
but I realize that a well-run town needs volunteers, and I'm the first person to stress that if you don't take an active role in your town, um, then you're not helping the town. Um, under no circumstances does that mean that everybody needs to be an assessor, a moderator, a finance committee director, or a selectman. It takes a ton of people, including sports uh, coaches, refs, Girl Scout leaders, Boy Scout leaders, parish council meeting, uh, members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It takes everybody to make a town run right. Hence, leading me to my second question is why are you running for the Board of Health? Well, Jennifer Gould isn't seeking re-election this year, so if elected, I would not, in effect, be pushing anyone out the door. I met with the Board of Health members, Dick Tessier and Greg Mish, about four months ago, uh, and asked them about the, que the questions about the position, and I've attended every single one of their meetings for the last three months, including the one that was snowed out. Hopefully, if I get elected, they'll give me a heads up next time. <laughs> I've seen septic plans, observed and reviewed pride station um, reports, listened to phone calls from food truck vendors and summer camps, sat in on meetings with their professionals to discuss ongoing matters that need attention. I've also listened to hours of explanations regarding situations from chicken problems to hoarders. The Board of Health does a lot, but again, I emphasize to you, they get it done in two hour meetings on Tuesday nights, one meeting per week. But they have help. Our current Board of Health oversees four, four professionals. Marilyn Iwanicki is in charge of animals. Uh, town nurse Margaret Bedard uh, takes care of town nursing issues. Perk testing is done by Richie Wilga and food site inspections are done by uh, David Zagronski. I believe I have valuable institutional knowledge that should be helpful to the Board of Health. I've already been helpful in resolving a payment issue uh, between a very large educational facility located in town and the Board of Health by pointing out um, that the uh, town issues their one day liquor license and I personally know that the select board, Joycey will attest, um, uh, likes to ensure that the request for uh, one day uh, liquor licenses is only granted if the applicant is in good standing with the town and that bill got paid immediately. There's two new issues on the horizon for the um, Board of Health. One is with the epidemic of the opioid deaths and families uh, not willing to incur the financial burden of burying the family members and the state not having the means to absorb these newfound expenses. Um, the state is looking towards municipalities to incur the cost of these funerals. I spoke to Jay Saluzniak regarding how big a problem this is, and he said it's huge. Um, he's decided not to be involved with these funerals because the state is paying so little on these indigent funerals that they're actually losing money. We're going to have to need to get involved with that and see if we can come to some resolution as to get that addressed. Hadley certainly doesn't have the problems that our major um, townships around us have, but we still have issues. And the other issue that the Board of Health has is the pending marijuana laws. laws. The State Cannabis Control Commission has come out with CMR 935 in draft form, spelling out the adult use of marijuana, and the town is expecting the final draft shortly. That'll be it. That'll fall under the purview of the Board of Health. Thank you again for the privilege of serving the citizens of the town of Hadley. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve as a select board member for nine years. I appreciate all the help and support I received. Thanks again to the Mother's Club again, and I ask you to vote for Jerry Devine uh, for Board of Health on April 10th. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma Dragon. As I stand here, I have strong memories of Fred Goodhue's speech class. And Hopkins and how much fun that was. So I'm really happy to be back and standing in front of our community and part of my adulthood. As a lifelong resident of Hadley, born at Cooley Dickinson Hospital in Northampton and graduate of Hopkins Academy, I look forward to serving the town government on the Board of Health. Even during my school age years, I showed my commitment to Hadley and the community as I earned my Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest award in Girl Scouting, like the Boy Scout Eagle Award through documenting history at the Russellville Cemetery underneath, actually, Fred Oakley. I have been a registered nurse and EMT since 2007 with an array of skills, including emergency, critical care, and behavioral health, and school nursing as well. 
I am now in my sixth year of working at Cooley Dickinson, and I am a union representative for the Massachusetts Nursing Association and have experience in nurse leadership and education. Since 2009, I've also had an intermittent civil service position where um, through the Health and Human Services, under disaster medical assistance teams, or DMATs, that provide emergency medical care during feder federally declared disasters. This past fall, I was actually um, sent during the hurricane season to Texas, Florida, and Puerto Rico, and was gone for a total of two and a half months for my family. Since moving back, I have also filled in as a substitute nurse at our elementary and um, high, here at Hopkins Academy as well. In addition to my professional work, I have a master's degree in emergency and disaster management. And I'm continuing on for my graduate certificate for nursing education. My husband and, and I, Kyle, have two children here. One, an eight-year-old son in second grade and a two-year-old daughter and a third child due in May. Um, my family has a strong lineage in Hadley um, where I cur we currently live in the house that my grandparents built and my li family lineage goes through the time when Hadley was settled as well. I am a Cub Scout leader of Pack 8 in Sunderland and one of our new uh, missions is to bring Cub Scouts back to Hadley and we're trying to do that and reorganize that for to begin in the fall of 2018. Our family are also active members of the First Congregational Church of Hadley, and I'm on the Board of edu ed Christian Education for that as well. So why should I be elected? I know my educational and professional background in the areas of community health, emergency med medical services, as well as disaster medicine, will provide an opportunity for me to make a positive impact on our community. This is supported by my experience on committees, forums, policy review, process improvement teams, and by complex issue solution management across a wide variety of settings. Additionally, my personal history and knowledge of our town's people and our town's history will make me right for taking Hadley into its next generation. The following are my five major objective, objectives for candidacy. One, improve process and procedures within the Board of Health as well as the use of technology to increase communication and transparency for the community. Two, public safety support for the continued development of our police and fire departments, including the future of municipality-based emergency medical services. Three, educational forums for the opiate addiction crisis, communicable infection outbreaks, and preventable conditions. Four, collaboration and team building within the school health departments for education and outreach with our student age population. And five, the knowledge and history of the town, including its challenges and traditions as well. I know that by being elected to the Board of Health position that my character traits of integrity, ethics, professionalism, and courtesy will be conveyed. I look forward to being able to serve for the town of Hadley in the Board of Health position. Thank you very much to our two candidates. If, uh, since you're both running for uh, the same office and this is a competitive uh, race, do either of you have a question for the other uh, for a two minute response? Um, I have two questions. Sorry to make you sit down again. No, you that. <laughs> so just to reiterate, so you will have the opportunity to ask uh, Jerry a question. And then, Jerry, you'll have two minutes to respond. Um, Jerry, uh, actually, what is um, your position or standing in terms of the uh, de future development of emergency medical services, including but not limited to police and fire departments, and including emergency medical services within the town of Hadley? I will, as have in the past, been supportive of our uh, of uh, Chief Spank Naval and Chief Mason in developing those those processes. I, I assume that there's uh, professionals involved with that, and I've always deferred to them uh, as far as letting them uh, be the guide, and we follow what they have to say. Thank you. And I have no follow-up question. Thank you.
Okay, so uh, moving on to the next uh, position, uh, candidate running for office, uh, we have Sheila. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this. I'm good at my Polish name pronunciation, but this one's tough. Sheila, um, what is it? Konesny. Uh, she's running unopposed uh, for a three-year term for elector under Oliver Smith. Will, thank you very much. Come on up, and you have five minutes. Thank you to the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting this event tonight. My name is Sheila Konezny, and I am a candidate for the Electra under the Oliver Smith will. I am a lifelong resident of Hadley and live on Shattuck Road with my husband, Stephen. We have two grown children, Jeffrey and Emma. I'm a graduate of the University of Massachusetts Amherst and have worked there for more than 30 years. Currently, I am the Associate Director of Financial Aid Services Part of this role, every year I go into the local high schools and host financial aid nights to help families complete the financial aid application process. I would like to share with you some of the information about the elector for the Oliver Smith will. Oliver Smith was a successful farmer from Hatfield who died in 1845, leaving one of the most extraordinary wills ever filed in Massachusetts. Smith Charities was established in 1848 by the will of Oliver Smith. In 1847, the heirs of Oliver Smith hired Rufus Choate to contest the will at a Supreme Court trial held in Northampton. The trustees of Smith Charities hired Daniel Webster, who successfully defended the provisions of the will. The provisions of the will, which have been amended, established a $400,000 trust, which has paid out over $9 million to qualified recipients from nine communities. Further provisions of the will included establishing Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. The will provides gifts to widows with children under the age of 18, brides, tradespersons, and nurses. My major duty as the elector is to represent the town of Hadley on the board of electors of the trustees of Smith Charities. I refer to the board of trustees, those who may be eligible to receive the benefits as provided by the will. Over a 10 year period of time, Smith Charities has disbursed over $30,000 to residents in Hadley. Other electors are selected by voters in the community of Deerfield, East Hampton, Amherst, Greenfield, Hatfield, Northampton, Whateley, and Williamsburg. Thank you for your consideration in the election, and please contact me if you or someone you know may be eligible for the benefits of the Oliver Smith Will. Thanks for that. We also have a uh, another Oliver Smith will um, candidate for re-election, Allison Dante Benman. Oh, she, right, uh, library trustee. Oliver Smith. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that's what my sheet said. So like, anyway, Allison, come on up. She's running for re-election for a one-year term for as library trustee. She made it sound so interesting. I'm thinking of switching my candidacy. But, you know, it's a little late in the game. I'm sure Jessica would have something to say about that. Um, my name is Allison Dante Bedman, and I am running for re-election for a three-year library trustee, along with my colleague Joanne Knisney, who is not here tonight. Uh, she's our current chair, and she's also uh, re running for re-election. I moved to Hadley in 2010, and I have been a library trustee since 2012. Um, like one of our other candidates mentioned, if we don't volunteer, things won't work. I feel very strongly about that. It's part of the reason I'm standing before you today. Um, I'm also responsible for three of the lovely Girl Scouts who brought you the flag this evening. I've been a leader of our Girl Scout uh, sixth grade troop ever since they were very cute little kindergartners. And they're all grown up now doing the flag. So as part of my job, uh, the library trustees, I was the chair of our library planning and design committee, 
the team that brought you the three point nine million dollar grant from the massachusetts board of library commissioners which was here before town meeting the town generously match that amount and this will enable us to build a new library the next three years are going to bring a lot of change to the town a lot of change to the libraries within this next three years we hope to build our new library within budget that's one of our goals um, I am the, currently the chair of our library building committee, so um, this is my responsibility, is shepherding through the whole process. Um, I bring to the table great project management skills, good financial skills. Um, my day job, I'm a director of institutional research at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, so I'm working with facts and figures all day long. Uh, so I've got a good eye on what we need to do to get the job done. Um, and uh, working with a community a committee of community members, members from other um, offices around town, our municipal building committee, our select board, our library friends. So we have a whole team working on this for you. This is part of the process, is getting good trustees into place. Um, while we're working to build a new building, uh, another one of our goals is to continue to maintain um, the status of our current building. It's uh, in relatively good shape for those of you who've been paying attention to the discussions about buildings. Um, we as trustees have done a great job maintaining that building and hope to pass it along to somebody else um, for the town to use. Um, and we also are going to continue our great programming, our great collections while we are moving forward to being in a new building. But uh, that's a few years off. We've got a lot of work to do between then and now. So I will be looking for your vote on April 10th so I uh, can continue the work. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Uh, next up, we have two uh, candidates, starting with Brian West, who's running for re-election. That's a you know, one-year term for moderator. So we'll start with Brian West, and after him, we will hear from Dina Friedman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, once again, thanks to the Butler's Club for hosting this Candidates Night. It's always an exciting year, a time of year when we have so many new candidates. So I probably won't use the full five minutes. Um, I am seeking re-election as your town moderator. I believe this is my would be my fourth year after serving 12 years on the select board. And I think it's important just for people to realize what the job of the moderator is. Um, you get to see us two or three times a year at town meeting, and obviously when there's town meeting, our job is to try and run that meeting as smooth and as efficient as possible. But what a lot of people don't realize, probably the most important job of a moderator is you pick, you appoint the finance committee and the long range planning committee in the town of Hadley. This requires a lot of thought. Um, when you start to mesh people on a board, um, in recent years it has been very hard to keep people on the finance committee. Right, Tom Pitta? <laughs> um, it's been a challenge, seriously. We talk about everybody up here who's potentially volunteering their time. In essence, some of these positions are paid, but it's it's basically, it's basically volunteering your time for the town of Hadley. And as a moderator, I've run into a real hard time finding qualified people for say the finance committee. And when you have such a huge responsibility for not just what's gonna happen on a town meeting floor, but what goes on the day to day, the weekly meetings, it's absolutely critical. Um, I think my experience on both the select board and as the moderator allows me to do that efficiently. Um, I have select members that call me about issues. I have members of the finance committee that call me about the issues. And luckily I have some experience with both. Um, I feel fortunate that I'm able to help them and answer any questions they may have. Um, but really I think if you ask me as a moderator, that's a more important job than running the town meeting. 
running the town meeting, usually you have a lot of support from the different boards who submit articles. And pretty much, as long as you maintain the sanity of the crowd, the meeting will go fine. Um, it's the day-to-day -day things that you don't see that are the challenging part as your moderator. Um, I'm a lifelong Hadley resident, graduate of Hopkins Academy, graduate of AIC, seventh generation dairy farmer in the town of Hadley. Um, obviously, my kids are in the school system. I volunteer as a basketball coach, as a baseball coach. Um, I've coached a lot of these different kids who have played athletics in this school for the last 10 years, and I'm more than happy to do it. So once again, I'd like to thank the Mothers Club for having this candidate tonight, and I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dina Friedman, and I moved to Hadley about 20 years ago. I fell in love with Hockenham. It's the friendliest place I've ever lived, and it's beautiful. And about a year after I moved to Hockenham, there was a um, movement to build 40 houses on top of Mount Holyoke. And my husband, Shell, and I organized a movement that stopped those houses. So part of that involved getting involved based on that issue to um, in-town politics, and we went to a lot of meetings. And growing up in New York City, it was very different to me to see democracy in action. And since then, I've gone to town meeting pretty regularly all the time. And the reason that I'm running for moderator is I love town meeting, which is kind of a funny thing to say, but I just love seeing pure democracy in action. And while I am a newcomer, I feel that that gives me a certain perspective and ability to be neutral and to really focus in on process. So a couple of things that um, I've been talking to residents that I think would be useful to do is number one, um, really enforce time limits, especially for presentations at town meeting. Also set an independent timekeeper. I love that this woman is here to gonna keep me on track um, so that discussion becomes efficient and useful. I'd also um, like to see video projection at town meetings so that people can um, follow the articles, follow amendments, and I would really like to be proactive in a, as a moderator in terms of the community by having orientation sessions so that people can ask questions about Warren articles. I notice it's always the same 10 people talking at town meeting, and I would like to have people feel less terrified about doing that. I agree with Brian that um, appointing the finance committee is a key part of town meeting. And um, I recognize that while I may not have the connections that he has, um, people who know me know that I work extremely hard at things. And I also do work at the Eisenberg School of Management, so I have um, connections there, and I would use my connections and networks, as well as work with the wise people who have spent years and generations running the town to identify fiscally skilled people who are willing to work on the finance committee. And to the extent possible, I would be available to answer questions. And if I did not have the experience to answer the question myself, I would work really hard at making sure that I found somebody who did. So I think I will yield the rest of my time as well. That's pretty much all I would want to say. But I chose this job because I do feel that I have the facilitation skills. And when I think about I've lived here 20 years, it's time for me to step up to the plate and serve the town. This is the role that I feel that I could be most effective. I have, in addition to my years of teaching business communication, I have a background in social work, group work, group process. Um, with Save the Mountain, I facilitated some very difficult, unwieldy meetings 
and transform chaos into action. And while hope, luckily town meeting isn't quite chaotic, I would hope that I could use those skills to make it a more pleasant experience for all. Thank you so much. Since we have two people running for the same seat, do either of you have questions for the other? Two minute response? No, okay. They meant what they said about wanting to run the meeting efficiently. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, we have planning board. Uh, James Maximosi is running for a, uh, another five year term. So you get five minutes to talk about five years. Thank you. Um, good evening, fellow citizens. First, thank you to the Hadley Waters Club for sponsoring this forum. They have been doing this, well, for a long time, almost forever, it seems. And it's a great way for candidates to express their qualifications and ideas. I'm not going to talk about myself running on a poll, so I won't bore you with that. I'll just give you some information going on with the planning board recently and what we have coming up on our plate. Last year, we completed an update to the master plan. That is the first update that was done. Um, state law says that if you have a master plan, you must update it about every 10 years. That was completed last year. The planning board is now working on an update, how to update with the various boards the implementation schedules. There are most of town boards in town have some responsibility on this, and we're looking at how we can keep up rest of all of the boards and the responsibilities. On the annual town meeting, we've got a couple zoning amendments, actually one and it is amending the senior housing bylaw and the inclusionary bylaw to make them more cohesive with each other and to remove the option of a uh, uh, trust fund. The trust fund, which is part of the bylaw, has turned out to be an extremely complicated issue, and for the time being, it is best that we simply remove that item from the bylaw to make it more compliant with what's actually going to be going on. In the fall town meeting, we've got a number of items we we'll hope to get on board. One is redoing, rewriting the zone bylaw and the town general bylaw on erosion and sediment control. This is a mandate that is called MS4 in the state of Massachusetts. Basically what MS4 means is back in the 60s and 70s, the US government, the EPA came down and says industry, you're going to stop polluting, you're going to clean up the air and the water, and you're going to stop. You're going to clean up what you've done, and you're going to stop doing it. They left the municipalities and, and states out of that. MS4, which about came, up, came about in maybe the early 2000s, um, said state and municipalities, now that the industry has pretty much cleaned up, you're going to clean up. And so there's a long process, and there have been several updates and the latest one takes effect, scheduled to take effect this, later this year, and it includes updating what we already have on board to be compliant with the latest mandate. Um, also, on the fall town meeting, we hope to have something for the marijuana recreational bylaw that was spoken about earlier, the draft bylaw, the actual um, law, uh, re regulation, not a law, the regulation came out last week or two weeks ago, there's no way we're going to be able to do that, rewrite, rewrite a bylaw and get on the annual town meeting, so the, that will be done on the fall town meeting. Back quickly to the inclusionary bylaw. One of the reasons that that's going to become important is right now Hadley's at about 13% affordable housing. That's what inclusionary is all about. And we just learned recently that we thought we were good for about 60 years with our 13%. About two weeks ago, we found out that in five years from now, 25 units are scheduled to come off of the inclusionary affordable, by, uh, affordable list, and about seven or eight years later, 80 more, which means 105 units out of our existing 295 will come off of the affordable list. That will bring us well below the 13 or 10 percent, and we could get affordable housing um, this called so-called Chapter 40B, um, we would now be subject to that again. So it is up to the selectmen and the planning board to work with the different developers to see what we can do to maintain that affordable unit stuff. Um, that hopefully we'll have something on that. Well, we at least we, we, don't, we, have to, we don't have to act immediately, but we need to start 
the dialogue with the different developers. The other stuff, with the other 175 that we have, uh, 190 that we would have remaining on the inventory is in perpetuity, so we're at least in good shape with those things. In closing, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you, and please vote tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, now uh, we have uh, two candidates here. I'm oh, sorry, I skipped the school committee. I uh, shouldn't do that. Um, we have Paul Pfeiffer who's running for re-election for school committee. It's a three-year term. So come on up here, Paul. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Paul Pfeiffer. Thank you to the, the Mothers Club, and thank you all for coming out. This is. This is great to see democracy in action. Uh, I am running for a second term with the school committee. This is the close of my first three-year term. There are two positions open. I am running as a write-in candidate for one. I'm currently uh, on the school committee, so you might ask, well, why am I running as a write-in candidate? Uh, and I wish it were a good story, but it's not. Uh, I, uh, I had all the papers filled out and I was uh, committed to bring them in on time, February 21st. And of course, when I got there, Jessica looked at me and said, uh, rightfully so, that I was an idiot, uh, that they were due February 20th. Uh, but to be honest, that was rather sobering. It took me aback. And I, I sat there for a second and I thought, if I am so busy that I cannot turn in a sheet of paper to a building that's a, a mile away from my house, maybe I'm too busy to continue on the school committee. Maybe I should just pass and let somebody else do it. But then I went and talked to Annie McKenzie, our wonderful superintendent here, and I realized there's a lot to do, and there's a lot to be done, and I want to step up and help do it. Uh, one, a couple of things that I've worked on uh, are still in progress, and I'd like to see them come to fruition. One is a renovation of our athletic fields. If you were at uh, a town meeting recently, the, the town, thankfully, voted for $400,000 to help us uh, renovate our, our fields. We're still in a fundraising mode for that, and we have a second phase that we'd like to do as well for that. Uh, additionally, the town had offered, had given us $400,000 to put in air conditioning units in the elementary school. Believe it or not, the elementary school doesn't have AC, and so in the beginning and end of the school year, it gets too hot for the kids to learn. Uh, we have just now received bids for that, and we're gonna be able to put AC in, in two of the three wings of the school, and I'd like to see that uh, whole building become air conditioned. But it's more than that, right? To me, I have two kids in the school, one in sixth grade, one in ninth grade here at Hopkins. Uh, I'm heavily invested in school as a backbone of the community and as a great opportunity for them. I think these small class opportunities that we have in this small school, uh, uh, also, it's amazing how much the school exposes them to the world and the broader community. Uh, and so it's, it's got the best of everything, I feel. Uh, yet there are some challenges. We have a declining census of children all across the valley. If you read the Gazette, you'll see advertisements from other public schools for school choice. It's a way for them to bring in income. Frankly, that's an initiative we're gonna start doing here as well. We bring in, in school choice, more money than we spend out. The kids go to some other school but we have some vacancies, some open spots where we can bring more kids in, raise more revenue, and help support the school. Uh, and there's also this idea of, well, what's the future uh, with uh, all these schools that are competing for a smaller resource, uh, a smaller and dwindling number of students? So I think what we need to do is maintain uh, the excellent academics that we have here, the excellent athletics, and continue to diversify. What I'm really encouraged by is the great school committee that we have, five great parents who are really committed to, uh, to seeing this school be successful. We've got a great academic staff here, great faculty, uh, a great superintendent. So I encourage uh, you, if you are so inclined, to please write in my name as a candidate, Paul Pfeiffer, P-A-U-L, uh, and it's uh, Papa Hotel Indigo Foxtrot Echo Radar in case uh, you are so inclined. And I'll be handing out stickers on the day. And I don't think it's tomorrow, Jim. I think it's April 10th for Election Day. So thank you. I'd like to say that my mistake, I apologize for that. 
Acton election is next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. My mistake, sorry. Thank you for correcting the fake news. <laughs> and, and, and Paul, uh, you could just say the dog ate my paperwork. Right? <laughs> All right, so now we move on. There are two seats on the select board. Uh, we're gonna start with the three-year term. We have two candidates here tonight running for the three-year term. Um, we have uh, Joyce Chunglo, who's running for re-election, and we also have Christian Stanley. So why don't we start with Joyce? Um, you have five minutes. That's pretty tough. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mother's Club, for hosting this event this evening. As usual, what can I say? We're here 30 years later, 30 years older, probably 30 pounds heavier, and I, I hope wiser. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to have been able to serve the town of Hadley and its residents for the past 30 years. I have loved every minute of it, both good and bad. Um, 15 years on the school board and 15 years on the uh, Board of Selectmen. I was raised and went to school in Northampton. I've worked in uh, the Cooley Dickinson for 47 years and now I am over at uh, the orthopedic office uh, working with my boys, I call them. And I married a local. Um, he took me out of the big city and brought me to the country, as he says, but actually my roots were in Waitley, my family farm. And um, I, I really had, I raised two children. They're both taxpayers and residents of Hadley, and they graduated from Hopkins and are part of the community. So I'm very happy that I'm still being able to um, honor you and, and being able to do this. My dad was on the Democratic Committee. My father-in-law was on the school committee for 12 years here in Hadley, so I guess it was just my calling to continue to do this. Um, the community is actually made up of volunteers, and none of us are in it for the money, that's for sure, because that's not what it's about. We're here to serve you. We're here to make Hadley a better town. Um, it certainly has, um, you're only one vote on the select board out of a five member board, so if you have an agenda, it, it can't be your own agenda. You have to make decisions that are the best possible ones for the whole town. Um, over the past 15 years, we have been, um, we initiated the CPA committee, which has taken care of open space and done many other things. There's a 3% tax that you pay every year that goes into a fund that does a lot of good for the town. We instituted the meals tax, the hotel tax, um, which serves in many different things for capital expenditures, which we weren't able to do before we were able to get these taxes. Uh, we initiated the DPW department, um, that had its ups and downs, and with the hiring of Marlo Warner, things have been a lot better. Um, we have uh, pump stations that have been fixed. We've had a new water treatment plant. We have uh, Route 9. Well, it was a terrible construction time, I know, but we were able to replace pipes on Route 9. Our pipes and water, sewer, and things in town are over 100 years old, and they need to be taken care of. Um, we have... Uh, each one of us on the select board has, um, is a liaison to a department. Mine is the public safety. Uh, my police department has expanded over the years with the hiring of um, Mike Mason after uh, our passing of Chief Huckowitz. And he's done an outstanding job with the police department in bringing down the overtime of, um, which was a big part of the finances, we now have 10 full-time uh, police officers, three sergeants, th three part-time, and some special officers, and they are just top-notch as far as I'm concerned. Um, we also have a community resource for the seniors and community, and we also have a resource police officer for the school department. Those are new additions that have, are going to serve the community quite well. We also have a fire department. We now have a full-time fire chief and that's Chief Bank Enable. He also is my pride and joy also of what he has done for the department. We now have a lieutenant, a deputy chief, 
and we're going to be hiring with the help of the finance committee. This all takes place with everybody pitching in and making public safety number one, but we're going to be hiring two more uh, firefighters where we're going to be able to cover the town for 12 hours, 24 seven, um, still needing, of course, the part-time uh, on-call forces at night. So um, we've really expanded our public safety and that's the most important thing. 30 seconds, here we go. Um, never enough time. How do you put 30 years or 15 years into five minutes? Um, my pride for a lot of things is the Memorial Day Parade. We have, um, I participated in it for the past 30 years. Um, our veterans are the most you know, honored people that we have in town. 30 seconds. Keep in mind that um, thank you for all that you do and voting and please come out. Thank you for everybody to, that has come out to be elected and stop. Okay. <laughs> Christian Stanley. I'm running for a three-year seat on the select board. Um, I just want to start by thanking the Mother's Club for holding this event. Thank everybody that's here tonight for coming out, and uh, thank everybody at home for watching, of course. Uh, I came to Hadley in 2009 uh, with my wife, and we chose to raise our three children here. Um, we, we fell in love with Hadley's, you know, scenic vistas, the hardworking farming tradition that's here in Hadley, and of course its proximity to amenities that you'd only find in a much bigger town. Um, when we first moved here, I was working as a professional engineer at a mechanical engineering consulting firm, but now I work at Valley Malt, the company my wife and I started back in 2010. Um, why you might ask my running for the select board. And really the reason is, is that I wanted to make a change and have an impact on my community. And I thought the select board was a great place to be able to have an impact. Um, you know, I especially want to champion the new senior center and library, but I also like a challenge. I'm a problem solver and it seems Hadley has challenges ahead. Uh, just a couple examples are the fire and police requesting more infrastructure, more staffing. Um, you know, how are we gonna pay for those things? Uh, municip municipal infrastructure, especially along Route 9, requires rebuilding. And again, that project can be combined with some DOT funding and DOT projects, but it still requires money. And I can't say right now that I have all the answers to, to these issues and the challenges ahead but I think I bring a fresh perspective, uh, entrepreneurial skills to the table that would be really great for the select board. I have a commitment to seeing more modernization in the town government, but I also think that the farmland is what makes Hadley a really special place and having viable family farms and agriculturally based businesses be successful into the future is the key for Hadley's future. As a business owner, I really understand business plans and budgets and how you need to generate revenue to pay for expenses. And so as a select board member, I'd really be looking for some economic development opportunities that are balanced and fit within Hadley's master plan. But I'd also be looking for some creative ways to raise funds if we can. I don't think that the challenges that Hadley faces are completely unique to Hadley. They, it has a lot of unique challenges, but also shares challenges with other towns in the Commonwealth. And so as a member of the select board, I'd be looking forward to joining some municipal associations and reaching out to neighboring towns to find solutions and best practices that they've implemented, but also looking for common solutions where we could work together. Uh, during the select board meetings, I'd really be looking to represent the will of the voters as best I can. Uh, I don't have a huge platform I'm running on where specific issues that I want to change. And like Joyce said, it takes the whole board or majority of the board to make change. Uh, I will be available to listen to voters' needs. I won't be afraid to bring up questions during meetings and question how we're doing things. Uh, 
and I also want to promote effective government governance and find common ground so that we can really move forward and make progress on the issues that Hadley is facing. Uh, I really think Hadley is an exceptional place. Uh, I'm really excited for the opportunity to serve on the select board, and I look forward to having your vote on April 10th. Thank you. So since you're both uh, running uh, in a competitive election, do either of you have a question for the other candidate for a two-minute response? That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Um, moving right along, uh, we also have a one-year term on the select board. We have two candidates running for the one-year term. We have David Phil. We have Jessica Kemp. So David, we'll start with you. Five minutes, and then we'll go to Jessica. David Phil and I'm running for the one-year term for select board. I was born and raised on Middle Street here in Hadley. I attended Hooker Elementary School, Russell School, and graduated from Hopkins Academy while also working on a farm here on West Street. After graduating from Hopkins Academy, I enlisted in the United States Air Force where I served for over 10 years in active duty and in the reserves, including combat tours in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom. After serving in the military, I started a successful contracting business, an aviation consulting firm, worked as a corporate pilot, and for the past 12 plus years, I've been a federal agent for the United States Department of Homeland Security, serving as a team leader on anti-terrorism missions all over the world to keep us safe here at home. I've served on numerous community organizations, charities, and professional organizations over the years, fighting for what is best for my family and the community as a whole. My wife, Brandy, who is also an Air Force veteran, and I have chosen to raise our three children, Audra, who is four years old, David, who is three years old, and Cora, who is nine months old, here in Hadley, because we know there's no better place in the world to live and raise children. We've been building a house in North Hadley for the past year or so, and I've had the opportunity to interact with just about every department in town as part of that process. What I've found is that our town employees are a lot of friendly and hardworking people who are asked to do their jobs without a lot of support or recognition. One of the challenges we have in this town is that although we really are a small town with a small town budget, we have a lot of problems that typically occur in larger towns or small cities. Our police and fire departments are asked to provide city volume services on a small town budget, and they do this heroically every day knowing that backup may mean waiting for the next town over to send mutual aid because of ongoing staff shortages. We've been talking about how to properly equip our employees with what they need to do their jobs for too long. Five-year plans for information technology improvements and other programs mean that we are constantly five years behind everyone else in the world. It's time to start taking action and solving problems. When someone tells me something can't be done or this is the way we've always done it, my response, and yours too, should be why. We live in a challenging financial time for the town of Hadley, and our success as a community means examining how we have always done things and thinking outside the box. If we want to keep our tax rate as one of the lowest in the states, it's time to look at things in a new light. Unless you like to watch two-hour select board meetings on public access, it's hard to keep up with what's happening in town with the select board. I'm a big fan of open and frequent communication and it helps to keep people informed and more importantly, engaged and to get things done as a community. I'd invite everyone to check out my website, electdavidphil.com, where you can learn more about me as a candidate and review my list of priorities uh, that'll be important for me if elected to the select board. Plan to use that website and my Facebook page to keep residents informed of what's going on in town and to keep an open line of communication for as long as I sit on the select board. So I'd like to thank the uh, Mother's Club for arranging this great event this evening, and of course my wife Brandy, and for her support, and my brother Richard and sister Jessica for their help with the campaign. As a combat veteran, law enforcement officer, business owner, father and husband, I've proven my leadership abilities, integrity, and success over the years using a common sense approach to problem solving, and by implementing cutting edge programs and solutions for complex issues. Let's keep Hadley a great place to live and raise a family. I hope to earn your vote on April 10th. Thank you.
Good evening. I'd like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting this event, and I recognize that I am standing between you and the cookies right now, so I will honor the five-minute limit. Are you? <laughs> My name is Jessica Kim, and I'm running for the one-year seat on the select board. My family lives a charmed life. On a warm spring morning, not like this morning, my two kids head to Hadley Elementary School by bike, picking up their friends along the way. Their route is safe, clean, and lined with green farmland. They arrive at a school filled with people who know and care about them. Later in the evening, we might walk down the bike path to our favorite restaurant, or to the Goodwin if a live band is playing on the lawn. Wow, isn't this an amazing place we live? I wouldn't change a thing. And yet, things are changing. Some of those changes are troubling, and some are coming along too fast. But we have a clear choice in how we navigate change. We could delay it through inaction, ignore the big picture, complain a bit, and just react to individual issues as they come up. Or we as a community could engage in a process of identifying and preserving what we value about our town, and planning the changes we need to ensure and enrich the future of Hadley. This process is already underway. In 2016, many of us took part in a town-wide community survey, which revealed top priorities for our residents. Last year's, town, last year's update to the town master plan reflected those priorities. Preserve the working farms that feed our community, focus growth strategically and support locally owned businesses by developing a vibrant and walkable town center, Keep town resources together in the heart of the community with space for senior programs, a bustling library, recreation, town services, and municipal parking that serve multiple needs. Evaluate our housing so that we continue to attract young families to our town and so that those on fixed incomes can afford to stay in the homes they love. And support our public safety departments with the resources needed to serve a small town with a lot of daily visitors. Clearly, the people of Hadley want to honor our commitment to the land, to our children, to veterans, seniors, local businesses. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected to serve on the select board, I will honor these priorities and work to identify the tools available to guide us through the process of change. I'm an educator by profession, and so I ask a lot of questions and seek out new ideas to identify solutions. But more than that, I work to engage people in the process. Many of us, Working parents, young adults, those with limited mobility, newcomers, do not recognize openings for our involvement. I've looked for them myself, and I've found them in some of my volunteer commitments, such as Hadley Girl Scouts, the PTO, and our library fund. Now I'm looking to more directly serve the people of Hadley, and I'd like to bring others along with me. If elected, I will make it a priority to find or to create those opportunities for meaningful engagement for a broad range of Hadley residents. I have experience in professional training in managing and guiding change by engaging people in productive dialogue and decision making. In my work as the director of the Writing Center at Amherst College, I manage a staff of 12 as well as our department's programs, services, and budget. I can only do this work successfully by engaging my colleagues and others at the college because that's how meaningful work gets done. When everyone has, with a stake gets involved, when multiple voices are heard and respected. Only then can we clearly and inclusively imagine a way forward and do the work to realize it. I'm gonna speak faster now. <laughs> this town of ours is built on a foundation of participatory democracy. When we make decisions at town meeting, we must hear each other, weigh facts and ideas, and make hard decisions. We all have a stake in the future of Hadley to preserve what we love about it and to chart a course to sustain it into the future. Our children are lucky. They grow up observing firsthand how powerful the voice of the community can be. They're growing up in a town that fosters debate and dialogue and empowers its citizens to make decisions for the town. They see that engaged democracy can be messy, but also that it can bring about new possibilities for the community. Hadley has so many possibilities. Let's choose to work together to save what we value and together build and enrich the future of Hadley. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Jessica. David, do either of you have questions for each other for a two-minute response? Um, my question for David. Um, your platform indicates that you would prioritize keeping taxes low, and you also express support for our schools. As you may have seen in the fiscal year 19 proposed budget, level funding has been proposed for the schools, which enact, if enacted, will result in actual cuts to programs and staff. In addition, enrollment levels are down and census data indicate that the trend will continue, which will effectively raise the cost per child of running our schools in the near future. How do you reconcile your support for our schools with this priority to keep taxes low? David now has two minutes to respond to that question. As someone with three young children who will be in the Hadley school system for a long time, the quality of the education is important to me. Um, I graduated from Hopkins Academy myself. Um, you know, we're known for having a great school system and a great community. That's important to maintain. At the same time, low taxes is what keeps a lot of people here. It's what keeps business in town. We have Route 9 and the infrastructure and the businesses associated with Route 9, which keep this, this town alive. Uh, you know, that's the majority of our tax base. That's where the majority of our money comes from is on Route 9. Uh, as far as level funding, look, we've had a problem with finding enough money to balance the budget for, for years now. Um, and like I said, it's important that we look at everything, every department, every budget, and, and see where there's waste, where there's changes that can be made, where we can save money, where we can implement new programs, um, if, if services can be contracted out more cheaply, if things can be done better, then uh, you know we need to look at all options. Everything's on the table. As far as uh, supporting the school system, I mean, it needs to be done. The school, the police, and the fire department are extremely important to our town, not only for keeping our reputation one of the best in the areas, but just making it a great place to live. So I'm willing to look at all the options and especially the upcoming budgets to see what can be changed and what can be done to, to do both, to balance both those issues. So, thanks. So we have a late addition to the program. Uh, we do have a candidate in the uh, audience tonight who's running for a Park and Rec Commission. Two-year term, uh, and I'm going to let him have five minutes too. He is running unopposed, so it's a nail biter. But anyway, <laughs> it'd be good to hear from Park and Rec, another very important uh, commission in the town of Hadley. Steve Higgins. Thank you, Hadley Mothers Club, and Mr. Moderator. Um, I want to uh, introduce myself as Steve Higgins, and. Uh, you'll be able to go to the uh, ballot polls now and say, oh, that's the guy. You know, when you look at that name there, you're gonna say, who is he? Um, so I just want to introduce myself. Um, I've been a resident here 17 years. Um, also, I wanted to just get up because I've never spoken in public before. And I figured, I'm nearing the end. You know, I'm well over 50 years old. I'm close to 60 now. And um, I've been involved with Park and Rec on and off. Um, I have two kids. Um, a ninth grader, I mean, a ninth grader, yeah, eighth grade girl, and uh, she acts like a lot, ninth grade, going on 21. And I have a son who's a junior, and um, they've been involved in everything that Park and Rec has offered. Um, things along the river, um, programs, indoor uh, indoor soccer's out of town. Um, my, my daughter most recently participated in the U-12 softball, which I was very proud to coach, and um, we went down and battled the big towns of Westfield, East Hampton, um, the programs that run throughout the course of the winter, they have pitching programs and batting clinics, something that we've never offered. Um, you get it on your own, basically in uh, Hadley. And um, I think we do a pretty good job with the volunteers that we have. And uh, I've done things as far as, uh, most recently, came out of retirement to coach uh, the U-12 Park and Rec boys and girls team, combination of Chinese Immersion School and the Hadley boys that didn't go into CYO, and we played the big boys of uh, Deerfield and Whaley and uh, Hatfield, and we held our own. You know, it's a good group and it's a good community. Um, once again, thanking the Mothers Club. 
my wife Kelly has been on the Mothers Club and uh, I know they have a lot of meetings and they do a lot of great things for the town. <laughs> I witness them and I'm friends with all of them and I want to keep it that way. Um, but uh, I am a uh, Navy veteran. I'm, in, uh, I'm a member of the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. I'm a veteran of the American Legion and I try to divide myself up equally to uh, address the needs of veterans and uh, very proud of having his way of participating in the uh, Memorial Day Parade. I marched, I've been marching since 1986. I'll date myself. Um, I got out and uh, immediately for my terms in, in Grenada and Beirut, I was eligible to get into uh, the BFW first. And uh, I, um, I, I'm strong about Park and Rec and keeping it alive and, uh, and bringing in my information, which would be in programming, like robotics programs and stuff uh, of that sort. Um, I have a 39 year um, time in, in machining, and right now I'm transitioning from machining in the field. I've got a teaching position down in Springfield um, at the Lower Pioneer Valley Education Collaborative. I'm a machine technology instructor, which I uh, kind of got out of the, um, the, the field, and now I'm sending my skills off to the young kids, getting into the business. But um, I would like to get into something like robotics, programming, um, even machine, whatever whatever we could use. I have a lot of connections in the areas um, to get these kids, boys and girls, into that. Because of the trades, the trades are really coming back. Um, I'm a graduate um, out of Smith Vocational. I'm on the advisory board there um, in the machine department. And um, I, uh, I look forward to serving this town. Um, I came on board and I'm really thankful. Um, the other commissioners, Diane Kiris Chilkis, Andy Klopaki, and um, working with them since I came on board in October. I am running unopposed and I look forward to uh, working. I worked with Missy Aloisi, who uh, put in countless hours during her interim um, as director. And I witnessed the program, the soccer program, where there was 85 families involved, and um, she handled that coordinating and scheduling seamlessly, and uh, I wanted to thank her personally for her efforts. And take this time to introduce uh, Jenny Lemberg, for those of you who don't know her, she came down from the hill towns in the Berkshires, and she brings in a, a huge amount of uh, experience in uh, sports management, and uh, she's running our program now. Um, she's got a master's degree in that, and uh, she's a big, big addition to the town. But um, now you can go away, and uh, when you get to vote, you can say, I know that guy, Steve Higgins. Sounds like he's got a lot of volunteerism left in him. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you all for being here. That concludes the first part of this evening. And if you've been writing down your questions, we're going to take a few minutes now to review those. Uh, have the Mothers Club very, very generously providing some refreshments in the back of the room. Uh, give yourself about, about five, six minutes. Uh, we'll review the questions and then we'll reconvene. And I want to thank every person on stage tonight, um, those that are running competitively for seats, those that are running unopposed. Uh, it's truly the volunteer work that keeps all these town departments going. And without each of you giving your time, town wouldn't be as successful as it is. So take some time, get some refreshments, we'll reconvene in about five, six minutes. Thank you. Every person answering a question will get two minutes for their response. We're going to start with uh, a question that uh, could really be, uh, it was put down here, select board or planning board, but I think it might be a good planning board question. So there are a bunch of select, uh, select board questions. So let's, um, this question will be directed to, to James running for planning board. The question is, do you support mixed use, i.e. commercial and residential together, like on Railroad Street, for example? That's a difficult one to answer because mixed use is already permitted in the zoning bylaw. You could have a business use and one single family dwelling, be it an apartment or a residence, 
in the same building already on the same property. Would I support, I think the question is more geared toward would you allow apartments um, as a mixed use? And I'm not sure. The reason for that is there seems to be an impression around that if we allow apartments in town that a lot of the people that can't afford a house could afford an apartment. I've talked to a few developers that would love to put apartments in town. They're looking at charging $2,000 to $3,000 a month for the apartments. So would they be affordable? Which is more affordable? A small mortgage, you can buy some house in Hadley, granted, there aren't a lot of them, there's not a lot on the market, but a $2,000 a month mortgage is gonna buy you a pretty decent house. Okay, so you're gonna pay two grand a month, roughly, for an apartment that is literally money out the window, or if you could get to $2,000 a month and put it into a dwelling and have some equity, which is more better. It's not an easy answer. And I don't have a good answer for that one because any developer I've talked to, you're not talking a $1,000 a month apartment because they know they can get good money for the apartments. So that's the catch 22. If you put them in, they'll come, and they'll come expensive. Okay, now I want to move to the position of town moderator. We have a question for both candidates running. What three things would you do to improve town meeting? Okay. What three things would you do as moderator to improve town meeting? Okay, three things I would do to improve town meeting. First would be to have written forms at the back of the room so that if people wanted to submit amendments, since they have to be submitted in writing, that would be all set up for them and they could do it easily and efficiently. The second thing I would do would be to in have video projections so that when these amendments were submitted, people could see what they were now currently voting on. And the third thing that I would do would be to have a timekeeper that was not the moderator, because the moderator is enough on their plate to have to keep time. So someone like this lady in the front who could let people know when their presentation time was up. I would talk to people in advance about how long that would be. Um, or what they would need that was a reasonable amount of time and also how long, generally it's about two minutes for speaking for each speaker. Three things that I think could vastly improve the efficiency of town meeting is something that we started recently in this town. Um, is a more public forums before the town meeting. Um, I've always, since I became moderator, I continue to push for, to get as much information in a taxpayer's hands before they even get into their seat. Um, if you can eliminate, you know, half the questions before they get to the microphone, it makes the meeting go much smoother. Obviously, video projection is huge. We don't use it as much as we should because we have people who are afraid of it. Um, but I agree totally with Dean on that. That could be a huge help. And then, of course, I think anything to do with uh, amendments would speed up the, the meeting. So having a pre-printed form that they could fill out obviously would go a great deal uh, for making that more efficient. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian and Gina. Now, uh, Paul, since you're the only one running uh, for uh, for school committee, we have a question just for you. Uh, the question is, what should we be doing, in your opinion, to stop our young people from leaving our public schools for school choice in other towns?
That's an excellent question, one we've been uh, discussing in school committee quite a bit. So I think everybody learns differently. And I think the matter of school choice in this valley is wonderful. Uh, if you're interested in learning Chinese, what an exceptional opportunity to be able to do that in public education. If you want to do performing arts, again, there's an exceptional opportunity. If you want to learn in a very loving, small class size, a very tightly knit community with excellent academics, uh, excellent academics, an entrepreneurial program, great faculty, Boy Hopkins and Hadley Elementary, those are the places for you. So what we need to do, I think, is get our message out about the great resource we have. Because I don't know if everybody knows that across the valley. I think we are very successful at pulling in folks, school choice, but yes, we are uh, having children that go to the Chinese school. We had uh, my son's class, uh, when he was a rising ninth grader, 11 out of the 53 students went to Smith Folk. The vocational school is wonderful. Um, so I don't begrudge those other schools, those Hadley students that go there. I think that's great for them. What we need to do is make sure everybody knows about the exceptional opportunities we have here and make sure we uh, maintain those into the long term. Okay, so the remainder of the questions that, uh, that I have um, are for all the candidates running for select boards. So, I have two sort of general questions and then two that actually focus more specifically on emergency services. So I'll start with one of the general questions. What specific policies would you change from the current direction of the board? Why don't we start with the two candidates that are running for the one-year term, and then we'll do the two candidates running for the two-year term. Again, the question is, what specific policies would you change from the current direction of the board. Why don't we go from the outside in? So Jessica, why don't you start with that? Thank you. Um, I will. Uh, I will be honest that I, I do not have any policies um, in particular um, that I want to offer to change. Um, so I'm going to, I guess, uh, defer the question. A few things that I would change. I would like to see more public participation in select board meetings. The comment period is rarely used. I'd like to see more people using that public comment period, um, asking questions to the select board and uh, just for general discussion purposes. I'd also like to see more communication from the select board rather than just having to rely on uh, going on the, the town website and reading uh, meeting minutes or to have to rely on um, Hadley Media. Hadley Media is great, but uh, you know our lives are busy. It's, it's tough to go through a two or three hour select board meeting, especially when you know they've turned into three nights a month instead of the usual, it used to be twice a month. Now we're up to three nights a month, some, some months, Ms. Chungo can tell you there's, you know, there are three hour meetings three, four times a month. Um, so as a general member of the, uh, of the Hadley community, it's tough to keep, keep up with what's happening. So I'd like to see some improved communication um, and, you know, using modern media, modern communication along with Hadley media. So thanks. I can't, kind of in the boat where I can't think of particular positions that the select board currently has that I would change, um, but I think there are some really good things happening, and one thing that, uh, one thing that keeps coming up in my mind is having a finance person um, in the town of Hadley, and how that could help with a lot of different things going on. Um, you know, there are question about public safety and ambulance service. Well, what does that look like from a business plan perspective? Um, I'd really like to see those numbers. How do the numbers look for selling the North Hadley Hall? How much money are we losing every day because it's not sold, but also there are a lot of issues around that. Um, so, so that's the only thing I can think of really is 
you know, having some more positions in town that provide information that we can use to make decisions. We have uh, kind of streamlined a lot of things over the last few years, actually. Um, we have a consent agenda that basically we just vote on unless there's something that we really want to discuss. Uh, we've uh, done open forums um, before town meetings that started the past couple of years. We've streamlined um, our agendas is what we're trying to do, and I guess we could do it a little bit more and giving, you know, um, I hate, people hate to say that, but things that we don't really need to bring to the table right away at our meetings. Um, we have a tri-board meeting once a month with the finance committee that seems to have worked very well. It's with the school committee, the finance, and the select board. Um, we seem to be able to hash a lot of things out at that. So I mean a lot of things are just keeping the lines of communication open and people want to talk to us. There is that open uh, 15 minutes before our meeting starts and people are always welcome to come. People don't always come. I mean, you can't get any more simpler than that. We have three to four meetings right now during budget season. So um, I, I think that's just the key to all of it is not necessarily changing policy so much, but to um, keep the communication lines open. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, we have a couple of questions related to emergency services. Here's a question about uh, police in Hadley. It says here, what's your position on the shift from police patrol vehicles that are clearly marked and therefore a visible sign of community safety and law enforcement openness to more stealthy police vehicles? Uh, by stealthy, I'm assuming that uh, this person means that they are unmarked or not as clearly marked, that do not clearly indicate that they are police vehicles. Does anybody want to take a shot at that? We've got a variety of different police vehicles in town, and um, Chief Mason knows exactly what he's doing, and the town has done a great job of uh, buying equipment within their budget. Uh, marked and unmarked uh, police vehicles, they serve two different purposes. Uh, you know, you can look up different theories of criminal justice uh, throughout history and they've gone back and forth from visible, uh, a visible presence to going back and forth to maybe you don't need that visible presence to be that same crime deterrent. Uh, I think what we have here in town is a, is a good combination. Um, it's like anything else if you're following the laws and whether, you know, you're going the speed limit, it doesn't really matter whether that car is marked or unmarked. So um, I would leave it to uh, Chief Mason uh, to decide what's best for his department in uh, buying marked or unmarked police vehicles. And what we have is, uh, I don't see any issue with it. So thank you. I think I would be, you know, leaning on Chief Mason basically to uh, look at any issues along those lines um, and looking at outside reviews as well to see if there's any issue with that. I think we just go along with what's accepted nationally or regionally or in the state of Massachusetts. Um, but I don't have any personal strong opinion one way or the other. I think having a good balance is good. But um, again, I would be looking for others to, to help make those decisions. I think that uh, one of the things that I would want to um, to find out um, is whether this is something that is is concerning um, citizens in or residents in Hadley. Um, I think this is an example of something that could be, um, you know, that, that needs to to be informed by the expertise from the police department, but also perhaps through a public forum with an opportunity to um, to discuss the the options. Um, I think that there's, um, I think there's a place for expertise 
um, and as, as well as a, a place for um, the public to really kind of uh, put their um, put their opinions on the table about this. I'm not exact. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is on why people are concerned about marked or unmarked cruisers. I see to think that that's throughout the state, your state troopers have unmarked cruisers. Um, if you look at some of our cruisers, it may look like there's no writing on them, but if you look at them in a different direction, there is writing on them, and that does say Hadley Police. It all depends on how you're looking at them. Um, and I don't think that they're in any intent to uh, foil people's minds of a, a cruiser sitting there. All of them have police uh, license plates on them. I don't know if you notice when you're going down the road and you look behind you, there'll be a blue plate behind you. Well, that's a cruiser, so, you know, a warning to self slow down. I have to do that all the time. But, um, <laughs> but I, I don't think there's any intent, and I'm sure, you know, Chief Mason would have more of an input on it. I don't know, Mr. Lafon, do you know why we have some that are unmarked or not? No, he's, we're taking, he's, he's taking the fifth tonight, okay. But I'm, I'm sure it's all uh, within uh, the rules and regulations. Thank you very much for that. That's an interesting question. I'm sure that uh, what might be warranted here is uh, some more information about uh, what the policy is behind having marked or unmarked uh, police vehicles. Next question is um, uh, about the ambulance service. Uh, what are your thoughts on the future of Hadley's ambulance service. Why don't we start with Joyce and then work our way down, if, you, if you'd like to. I'm presently on an ambulance committee, which is about my fifth time being on an ambulance committee for over the years. Um, we have service right now with the Amherst Fire Department. Um, they have certainly served the town of Hadley extremely well. We've been very pleased with their um, responses and how they respond to our town and everything, but they're getting to be pretty maxed out over there also. Um, they're looking to beef up their department. They're also looking to, we're in negotiations with them right now, and we've also looked at an outsource of somebody else, and they've put a very lucrative and uh, package on the table for us that we're still looking at right now. And what we want to do is make sure that we have the best service that we can for our citizens. Um, in response time and being, uh, being able to, I mean, uh, I think if you noticed recently that um, Amherst can be, they have six um, ambulances over there and working at the hospital some mornings when I would go in at six o'clock in the morning, there would be six ambulances over there, or five ambulances, and we're having to have Northampton respond for mutual aid. So, I mean, we're also looking to beef up our own. We would like to start our own uh, ambulance service at some point, at least start with the VLS uh, service, which is basic, um, and move into that, but it takes time and effort to do that, so that's another thing that we're looking at right now, too, to have a service within our own town. And for me, I'm kind of a numbers guy, I guess, so I'm gonna come back with numbers, but it, you know, it really comes down to, well, my bad, my thick knowledge of everything is, you know, I think Chief Spankenable wants to go for having an ambulance service that's based out of Hadley currently. It's a semi-regional service where we pay Amherst to perform our ambulance services, and I think it's just comes down to how, how much is it gonna to cost to have our own ambulance service both up front and long term and does that pay back in the long run? Um, is it cheaper to go with the Am Amherst service as it is? Is it cheaper to go with, um, I'm sorry, Action EMS, I believe that's on uh, Route 9 there. So uh, again, I would like to see some numbers on all those different scenarios and see how it affects the town, but then also have to balance those numbers with the service that you would get from those different services. I think it's a really complex issue and uh, don't have all the answers, but you know, if 
if I were elected to the select board, I would like to see some of those numbers and, and really be able to make a decision based on how much it's going to cost the taxpayers. I spent some time working on an ambulance uh, when I was in the Air Force. Uh, it was actually in the D.C. area, so we got to see a good variety of calls and, and things with the you know, kind of big city environment. I can tell you that the service that Amherst provides is great for advanced life support. Um, you need to look at some of these private ambulance companies and the quality of service that they actually provide, the amount of training that they provide for their medics, and their response times and equipment. Um, Amherst has a proven track record of good training, good services, uh, well-equipped ambulances. Um, I can tell you that these private companies, they're in it for one thing, and that's to make money. And that's fine until that call is for one of your family members. So I'd caution on making the jump to a private service um, without looking at the big picture. Amherst has worked well for us for a lot of years. Um, and it's been a cost-effective solution for us. Um, the chief is interested in bringing uh, at least basic ambulance service into town, and I think that's a, it's, it's a good idea, um, but it's expensive, and it's something that the town's gonna have to find a way to pay for. So um, for now, sticking with Amherst Fire Department is probably our best bet for the foreseeable future. Um, and, and again, it goes back to the quality and the response time and the amount of training that the, the, the medics provide. So thank you. The nice thing about going last is I feel like everyone's kind of covered a lot of the things that I'd like to say. So um, I think the only thing I want to add to this, um, uh, you know, to you know, we need to we need to make some good comparisons. We need to see what the what the real options are in terms of having homegrown, in terms of outsourcing or continuing with with Amherst. Um, but I think this is a situation where having um, some more professional financial advice. Um, available to the to the select board would come in handy. Um, obviously, this is more than a financial decision, um, but um, but it, in essence, that's the the bulk of the question. So, um, you know, there there has been talk of a dedicated financial director for the um, for the town, and I think this is a, a situation where that that um, that role would be very useful. I just want you to keep a number in your head that we're running almost a thousand calls per year in Hadley. So that's that's quite a few calls for our town and I think a lot of them not just serving our residents but people that are transit coming through the town. That Route 9 has a lot of uh, ambulance calls as well. So that's a good number to keep in mind when we're looking at things and what we're doing. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, last question of the evening uh, is more broad, so it will be for each of our people running for select board. What can the select board do to bring longtime residents and newer residents of Hadley together? Who wants to take that one? I appoint Jessica. Jessica. Um, well, I, first of all, I'm going to field this question as a, someone who must identify as a newcomer. I've lived in Hadley for nine years now. Um, and, and I have to say, um, when you move to Hadley, it can feel difficult to kind of step into the conversation. Um, you know, I think, um, I do not think I have yet spoken up at town meeting. I think there have been times I've had notes jotted down that I wanted to go up to the mic to speak um, and didn't know, sorry, that's my, that's my daughter there. <laughs> I didn't know the protocol. Um, so, you know, I think that there are a lot of ways that um, newcomers could be more um, directly invited into certain conversations. Um, in the town, um, perhaps sort of oriented to here's what 
here's how this, this goes. Um, that being said, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of history in this town um, that, that uh, you know, obviously newcomers are just don't have access to, and, and perhaps that's a good thing. Perhaps that allows for um, some conversations that start with a, not a clean slate, but a wiped off slate a little bit. Um, and so, you know, I think that I think that looking for those opportunities to to um, to talk about issues in front of us um, and deal with just those issues at hand um, and try to leave the um, the you know the, the the old scars that they might ev evoke behind, so that everyone who has something at stake in that issue, you know, I'm thinking of the the senior center um, plans right now. In particular, and I think that there are opportunities to to really focus in on what what is it that we are trying to accomplish with building the senior center, with with meeting the needs of, of the American Legion, and can we find a way to just talk about that particular piece and leave what may be some other issues from the past um, behind. I think it goes back to communication um, and getting the, the residents of Hadley to, to talk about the issues and to work things out. Obviously, the uh, I guess we, we can if we go by age, we have younger residents and older residents have different concerns with the community center or the senior center, uh, maybe even the library. But uh, we as a community have spoken through our votes um, and in various public forums uh, and, and made our, our wishes known. I think that bringing people together and working through the issues is important. Um, it goes back to the public comment period at the select board meetings, uh, using those those uh, open forums as a, as a chance to bring out issues uh, helps to bring people together. I think that as a town, we're, we're, we're fairly cohesive. I think that uh, you know we get along fairly well. Uh, we're small enough that we pretty much know everybody in town, at least faces, maybe not names. Uh, you know, we see each other dropping our kids off from school. Uh, we see each other at uh, you know shopping and out and about. So I think that as a town, we're we're fairly tight knit. And uh, as, as Jessica said, maybe as someone new to the town, uh, it might be a little tough to kind of break the ice. But I, I'd say overall, we're a pretty pretty friendly place to live. And I think that we uh, we come together pretty well as a town as it is. You know, community building is a really great way to get new and old together. Um, so, new residents, old residents, by that I mean. Um, and, you know, I think this is a great example of where we can get together is uh, town meeting, um, running for town office, having different faces uh, be representative in those offices can be really great. I think, um, you know, the library and senior center projects, I think those are great places to build community because they are places where people can get together and just do something together and it doesn't have to be about neighborly conflicts or anything else. It can just be about enjoying your company together and I think that's what really builds relationships with people um, and making it a safe space where it's not very intimidating because sometimes if you're at a town meeting, that can be intimidating if you're at a school at an event that can be intimidating too because there are groups that form and it's tough to break in. So um, I do think that you know having spaces where we can get together and just do things together that are um, that are everyday events, having a beer, having a, a class at the senior center would be great. And and having different views on the town government I think would be really great too. Thanks. Well, this is a good example of the old and the new. Um, so, you know, it's nice that I'm thrilled to death that people have come out. I thank these young people for volunteering or coming out to run for an elected office. Um, it has to start where they are, and I appreciate that. Um, and I think just, um, I think our lives have gotten so busy that sometimes we don't even know our neighbors uh, as we used to years ago. And I think 
if you just reach out to your neighbor, bring them along to town meeting, um, talk to them about what's going on in town, getting them interested in what's going on, I think that's a plus. It's communication, and communication is within everything. Your schools, that's where you start off by making friendships for years with your friends, um, being able to still have them as your friends as you get older. So that's where it all starts. You start in the schools, you start with activities, um, and getting people involved. And so I, I, I think that's just what we need to do as a town. And I think Hadley does very well at that. I think we are a, a close-knit community. We don't all, we always agree, um, but we, imagine Ginger, um, <laughs> but we, we try to, uh, at least listen to what other people have to offer, and I think that's the most important thing. I wrote a question about racism and big trees, which was not addressed tonight. Right. I wanted to know if the censorship was going We choose uh, to address that one, but you're welcome well, to discuss that with any of the candidates here. And this so. is the second time I've come that it hasn't been addressed. Okay. We'll talk about that afterwards. Okay. All right, this time I want to uh, invite Why? Denise. I want to talk about tonight. <laughs> There's plenty of time to discuss it. No, it's it's discuss right? It is participatory. Okay. Everybody's participated. Censorship for the second It's not really censorship. The it's question was worded in a way that was <laughs> accusatory and uh, it sort of made a uh, statement of facts, which were more opinions. So it's not really appropriate for this forum. So I chose that discretion. So censorship going on now. It's not really censorship. But anyway, all right. So I want to call upon Denise uh, Devine, uh, president of the Hadley Mothers Club. To close out our event, thank you very much everybody for coming. Thank you for the candidates uh, for stepping forward and taking the time to discuss all these issues with us tonight. And um, Denise, thank you. All right, well, I'd like to thank a few people to, for making tonight possible. Uh, the staff of Hopkins Academy, uh, Hadley Media, um, Chief Mason, uh, and members of the Hadley Police, and Joe. In the back. Um, DPW Director Marlo Warner, as well as Billy Kelly and Gary Bird for our signage. Headley Girl Scouts, Bob uh, Harris, our moderator, all the candidates for their participation and service to the town. I'd also like to thank, on a personal note, um, Peg Jekinowski and um, Jessica West, who um, are co chairs of this event. Um, and all of our Hadley Mothers Club members who are here and um, participate. Um, you know, we, we don't do everything, just one or two people. We have a great group of uh, ladies that do a lot of work in the community, and they do a lot um, with Mothers Club, but they also do a lot in other capacities, too. So um, they are all very busy, and uh, we do appreciate, and I do appreciate all their work um, every time, every day. Um, so as a reminder, the Hadley Town election is Tuesday, April 10th, here at Hopkins Academy. The polls open at 9 a.m. and they close at 8 p.m. Um, everyone please vote. Um, you know, that time frame, you should have um, more than enough time to, you know, uh, vote after work, uh, lunchtime, um, you know, whatever's convenient for you. We'd really love to see you come out and vote. It's in the gym, too. It's just so you'll know. Um, all right, and I'll just turn it back over to Al. Again, I want to thank the Hadley Mothers Club, a uh, very dedicated group of volunteers, having a round of applause. Excellent job. Um, thank you for all the work you do. Thank you for providing us the opportunity to talk to the candidates and to uh, really discuss a lot of very important issues facing the future of the town of Hadley. Um, just as a reminder, this program will be rebroadcast on Hadley Media. Check out their website for specific times when they're going to run it. Um, and this time gives me great pleasure to call once again on the Girl Scouts from Hadley to come retire the colors. And here's the true MC for the evening. Oh.
Color guard, dismiss the colors. Color guard, dismissed. Thank you everyone for coming and good evening.